Hi there, I'm Ethan with TheHonestCarpenter.com and today I'm going to show you a few tricks for making sure that your cabinets are securely fastened to the wall. In this video I'm not going to show you how to mount cabinets, which is a much more complicated process, but uh, I do get a lot of calls from clients worrying that their, their cabinets are uh, not very securely fastened to the wall and it's a legitimate concern because a lot of time when I come in to check I find fasteners missing, I find cabinets hanging a little bit loose. So I'm going to show you a few tips for making sure that your cabinets are securely fastened to the walls and that you don't have to worry about them falling down if they have a lot of weight inside of them. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and empty out the cabinet. It'll just make it easier to see everything that you're dealing with because uh, we are going to be looking inside the cabinet. Um, cabinets are usually fastened in two of three places generally and I'll go ahead and show you. These are cabinets with face frames. These are your most standard types of cabinets in America. In Europe they make a lot of cabinets without face frames. Some people are getting those in America. It has kind of a modern contemporary look. They're mounted a bit differently and I'll talk about that. But for most American cabinets you have a carcass or body and then you have the face frame to hide the plywood edge of the cabinet. So when cabinets are made like this the two most important places or most likely places to have fasteners is this rail underneath. This uh, rail is put here intentionally to catch the floor of the lower cabinet, but uh, it also provides a fastening surface that you can drive fasteners through into studs in the wall to mount the cabinet. In this case, you notice there are no fasteners here. And what these carpenters have done instead is mount through the back panel of the cabinet in the corner over here, and over here where there's obviously another stud and I did I did check you can also tell that because there is an outlet on the wall and outlets are always mounted to studs this isn't a terrible place to have a fastener and they put it in here to hide them basically but the thing is this back panel is only about a quarter inch or less thick about 3 16 it's not very strong um, this little ledger underneath the cabinet is about a half inch thick. This is much better to fasten through. People don't like to do it sometimes because you can end up seeing the fastener head, but honestly, it's below eye level and it's a much stronger place to put in a fastener. So before I leave today, I'm probably going to go ahead and add fasteners underneath this cabinet. So those are two places, one ideal and the other not terribly ideal. The third place where you should pretty much always see them is above the cabinet. And here, the same rule applies. You do see them here in the same locations that we saw them in the back panel. This is your top ledger. Obviously, nobody's ever going to see this. So when people mount cabinets, they're almost always going to use fasteners in these locations. It's not bad. Um, if you only had these two, the cabinet would stay up. But it's not exactly secure. Uh, so you want two up top. And I would much rather have two, as I showed, in the bottom ledger underneath the cabinet. And then it can't hurt to have fasteners in the back panel. It just can't hurt. If you're going to do it and you don't want anybody to see it, instead of putting it down here at eye level, put it just above one of your shelves. And that way when people are looking from ground level, they're not going to be able to see it. So here's a cabinet in this same kitchen where I felt like I did not find enough fasteners. There were two up in the top ledger, as I just showed, then none in the back wall, and there were none in the bottom ledger. So uh, what I really want to do is at least get two more in the bottom ledger, uh, and I did that, will do that using these tools. You got a stud finder, and um, the top screws showed me basically where I could find a stud. I could, I could confirm it underneath here, right here or by doing it uh, on the wall up above. It's always best to do it close to where you're going to be putting the fastener in. So knowing two stud locations, um, I then drilled a hole with a 7 16 bit and my 18 volt drill right through the bottom ledger. I did two of them where my two stud locations are. And I wanted to get through the drywall as well and into the framing behind. As I mentioned, this uh, ledger strip is a half inch thick and then the drywall is a half inch thick. You really want about an inch and a half of fastener going into the wall. So I'm using two and a half inch screws and I'm specifically using this brown color just so they blend in a little better than a drywall screw. 
would uh, where that that black screw head would show up a little bit more. So I went ahead and pre-drilled and I also countersunk just a little bit to create uh, a conical depression there. So I just go ahead and set the screw and I'm gonna use my DeWalt impact driver with a hex bit in it. Um, I said 7 16 bit there, I should have said 7 64 it's a little slip of the tongue, but as I showed, I've got my hex bit set in and I sunk the screw halfway and I'll go ahead and drive it the rest of the way now. That's it. Don't overdrive them. You want to leave them just about flush with the uh, support strip and I'll go ahead and do it to the other side. And one other place that you're going to see fasteners occasionally is in the side edge of the face frame. And what it's basically doing is locking that face frame to the one that sits right beside it and it draws a gap out of the two in case they wanted to hang a, a away from each other just a little bit. Um, these are much harder to set and it's something that the cabinet installers are undoubtedly going to do themselves when they're setting them to close up those tiny little gaps. If you're going to attempt it um, to close up a gap of your own, do it very carefully. That gap may not want to close. It may just be how the cabinet was hung and it would almost need to be rehung to close a gap. You definitely want to pre-drill it first um, and countersink, make a conical depression uh, so that the screw can sit right down in it, as you can see. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna split the face frame and that's a costly mistake because it can really kind of screw up the whole cabinet. Uh, also, as I mentioned, there is a, a European style cabinet that does not have a face frame. Instead, the doors sit flush to the outer edges of the cabinet and it kind of hides the body of the cabinet behind the doors. Um, these, in these cases, most of the manufacturers that make these create some other mounting system. Sometimes there'll be a rail along the back wall that you fasten through into your studs. Some of them, if uh, they don't have bulkheads above them or something, there's a rail above the cabinet that you can top hang the things to. Uh, generally, these are going to be manufacturer specific though. So just look for any instructions uh, with European cabinets or just look for evidence of obvious places where you're supposed to fasten through because there should be um, a thicker back panel somewhere or just a back rail and uh, that's your mounting point. I've linked the tools used in this video on my blog, thehonestcarpenter.com. You can follow the URL in the description to go straight there. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe below.